Over to you, Catherine. Okay, well, thank you, Faith, and thank you so very much for inviting me to come and do this session. Um, so as Faith said, my name's Catherine. I am one of the co-founders of Rages and Beauty, and we, have, uh, we are a mineral makeup range which is specifically formulated for older women. And I guess um, as founders, my, my, my other founder is a, a lady called Paula, um, we saw that the beauty industry was not catering to older women. They weren't considering what our, how our skin changes, how menopause has affected us, and how as we age, things happen to your self-esteem and things like that. So what we wanted to do was create a range of um, products which are Australian-made, cruelty-free, predominantly vegan. We do use beeswax in a few of our products. Um, that nurture older women's skin and um, they're easy to use and that they are, uh, you know, products that anyone can use and feel good about themselves because that is what the purpose of makeup is. Like we're not, you know, our message isn't that you need to wear makeup, you know, you, you have to make yourself look good. We would just want you to feel good about what you look like and self-esteem and getting older are so um, intricately tied. So I guess that's kind of a little bit about us. We've been uh, we've been around for about three and a half years. And when we first started in this makeup space, there was no there was no imagery of older women um, wearing makeup either. And that as as a brand is something that we're really proud of because we feel like we were one of the first brands that actually used we use mostly our own customers and we don't filter, we don't Photoshop any of those sorts of things. So anyway, enough about us. Let's uh, let's start on the makeup. Um, if you've got any questions as we're going along, please um, feel free to um, type them. Is that what you wanted, Faith? Type them. Yep. Um, because I'm very happy to ask uh, answer anything. Because um, you know it's an it's supposed to be an informative session. So first of all, let's start with um, what what is the first step with makeup? Well, I think. The important thing is to find products that actually work on your skin. So as we get older, we've lost a lot of hydration, particularly once you go through menopause, your collagen uh, production goes right down. You often find that your, your face gets thinner because you lose the fat that um, we used to have when we were younger. And so you need products that are going to nurture your skin and make your skin feel really good. So um, obviously, all of you would have some kind of skincare regime, whatever you're doing. I'm sure it's working. I'm sure it's amazing. Um, but the first thing that we always recommend is to start with a product like this is our, oh, if you can see it, this is called our glow oil. So oils are fabulous for mature skin. The reason being that they give your skin an absolute punch of hydration before you put your makeup on. And obviously, the, your makeup is only going to look as good as the skin you've got underneath it. So a lot of women have been put off by oils thinking, oh, no, you know, I'm going to get pimples. They, they don't absorb, whatever it is. If you look for an oil like ours, ours is a jojoba-based oil. And jojoba oil, even though it's actually a waxy ester, it's called an oil, is really absorbent. So it will... When you pop it on, it will just immediately absorb into your skin. And also find an oil that's got, um, ours has got avocado, it's got rosemary French, it's got frankincense, it's got all kinds of different oils which nurture and, and support older skin before you even get your makeup on. We call this a, um, a pre-primer. So I'll just pop some on. And I'll just show you, when you use any oil, don't use too much. And that's one of my mantras. <laughs> Don't put too much on because you find if you wear, the more you wear, the more opportunity there is for your makeup to cake and, and not to sit the way that you want it to. Um, so as you can see, I'm just popping that in. It's just going to give, it looks a bit shiny now, but it will absorb, it will go into my skin. And a great thing about an oil like this as well is that you can also use it on your hair, which is Actually, I might just pop my hair up quickly just so that you've got a good look. Um, and it's also, ours has also got lavender in it, which is really relaxing and soothing for the skin. So that's the first step. So if, you, if you're wearing an oil, 
just give it a couple of minutes um, to absorb and, you know, go clean your teeth, make a cup of tea, whatever it is that you're doing in the morning. Give it a few minutes to go to absorb into the skin and give your skin that lovely nurturing hydration that it needs before you pop your makeup on. The next step after, after your oil is to use a sunscreen. And we always recommend a dedicated sunscreen. There are a lot of um, makeup products, BB creams, that kind of thing, which have sunscreens in them. Um, or, but we always recommend, particularly as, you're, as an older woman, you've had years of sun damage behind you, always wear a dedicated sunscreen. So one that I actually really like is a Mecca one. This is called, what is it called? Save Face Sunscreen. It's a really lovely one. You need to, when you're looking for a sunscreen to wear under makeup, try to avoid the very zinky ones because the zinc is a white mineral and so it often gives that white ghosty kind of cast. They're really great sunscreens, but they're often not that great to wear under makeup. So that's just a little sunscreen tip. The other thing with sunscreen um, and makeup is to make sure you put enough on. So even though you're wearing a light layer, just make sure you use about a teaspoon and that will give you enough um, sunscreen across your face and always put it down your neck as well because we often forget our necks and we always forget our decolletage. So try and bring it down there as much as you can as well. So I'm not going to put sunscreen on because... Um, We've only got 50 minutes and so I'll be here all day. So the next step then is a primer. Um, now, the purpose of a primer, I'm not sure how many people use primers, but primers are fabulous for older skin. The purpose of a primer um, is to basically create a barrier between your skin and your foundation. So what the primer will do is it, it almost is, I mean, it is called a primer like priming a wall. It blurs and diffuses the lines and it creates a really nice smooth surface for your foundation to grip, which will help your foundation last longer. Um, and with primers, if you go into a shop like Mecca or Sephora, David Jones, wherever it is, you will see the most enormous array of primers <laughs> and it can be very, very confusing. So what we recommend for mature skin is an illuminating primer. So try and avoid mattifying primers because mattifying primers will basically make your skin sort of dull your skin down. The purpose of them is to stop the shine, but we don't want shine, we want glow. So therefore we're looking for um, an illuminating primer. So this is our illuminating primer. It's, um, it's got mica in it, which are illuminants and they project light outwards. And it also contains lots of hydrating ingredients, it contains pomegranate oil, sea buckthorn, raspberry and kiwi oil, which will hydrate your skin and keep the moisture in when you're wearing your makeup. So I'll just show you how to use it. With your primer, products the other little tip I would say is always put them on the back of your hand before you put them on your face because that way you can control the amount of product that you're using and also you don't waste product by putting it in your fingers um, so basically with the primer with our primer you could just use a, use fingers just pop about that much on grab it and then just bring it across your face and it will give it feels really smooth. Look for a really sm smooth kind of silky primer as well because it then it won't sit in the lines. It will just nicely sit on the face and you'll, it will become almost like skincare. You almost want a product um, which is, feels like skincare on your skin. So that, and that, it looks like um, our primer looks, I'll just show you a little bit again, just close up it looks like it's got color but when it's on the skin it doesn't matter what your skin tone is it just absorbs in and it's got no um, no color at all so that's um, again the other little tip and I know we're all in a hurry in the morning but if you can give it a minute or two to sit on your skin, it gives your skin a chance to adjust to the feeling of the product and gives the product the opportunity to kind of absorb and um, actually get into the position that it needs to be in before you put your next step on. 
I mean, I must admit I'm terrible at that. I just am kind of slapping things on because I'm always trying to get out the door. But if you've got the time, give yourself that little bit of luxury to um, to just give the product a little bit of time to sit on your skin before you move to your next phase. So that's the primer. Illuminating primers are mature women's most best fabulous friend when you're wearing makeup. And another little tip too is um, if you are in a hurry and you don't feel like wearing a lot of makeup, you can always just wear a primer like ours and a bit of concealer and maybe some setting powder and that's really all you need. You can just get away with that um, for the day. Okay, so I've given that a minute or two. Um, the next step is foundation. So foundation is, is the thing that we get most of our questions about from our customers. And everyone's always quite worried about shade and how, you know, whether it's the right shade and whether it's going to fit, um, be right on your skin. And a lot of the time, I think a lot of women worry about that unnecessarily because particularly mineral foundations, you find that they adjust to your skin tone. So you might look at it in the tube and think, oh, I don't know about that. But when you actually get it on your skin and it gives, gives a bit of time to warm up on your face, it will adjust your skin tone. So we at Rageism have got two different kinds of foundation. So we've got our liquid foundation, which is this one. Um, and this is probably our best seller out of all our entire range. It's got, um, it's a mineral foundation. So it adjusts your skin tone. It's got titanium dioxide and zinc oxide. So it's got a small SPF. But as I said about the dedicated sunscreen, always stick with that. Plus it's got squalene, hyaluronic acid and lots of um, really beautiful skin loving ingredients. We also have powder foundations, which um, are 100% pure mineral. And a lot of older women are very uh, about powder foundations because they think they're going to sit in the lines and the wrinkles. I, I'm 52. Am I? Or am I 53? Oh, my God. Isn't it terrible? You forget. No, I'm 52, I think. Um, and I absolutely love a powder foundation. I find that I'm, I'm mid-menopause and I get very sweaty. Oh, you've got one. Yay! And it just sits really well. It's super lightweight. And um, a lot of the time you don't actually feel like you're wearing foundation. And that's what I love about them. I mean, these the liquid foundation is also very lightweight, but it does, it's, it's a different kind of feeling on your skin. So I'm in Sydney. It's very humid. And for really humid environments, I think it's, uh, it's a great option. The other little trick... Um, is combining them both, which is what I'm going to do today, just to show you the different look that you get from each foundation. So I'm going to pop the powder foundation on first. It doesn't have the illumination that the liquid does, but remember, I'm also wearing the primer underneath, which has got illuminance in it. So you still get the glowy look, but not quite as glowy as if I went straight through with the, um, with the liquid foundation. Oh wrong product here we go okay sorry I was picking up the wrong thing so this I'll just show you if if anyone's never used a powder foundation I'll just give you a demonstration on how you actually use the product so you can see it's got holes in the filter you just pop it into your a little bit into the lid that's heaps and then you need to use a nice thick brush see how that's domed it's really tightly packed bristles and it's a domed brush. Now, this brush is amazing. It's called a buffer brush. You can use it for liquid foundation or powder foundation. And as you'll see in a minute, I use it for both together, which means that you're also wasting less product, which is what we all want. You don't want to be wasting your money on product that you're just basically going to throw away. So grab, you grab your brush and you swirl it in the lid and always... Um, shake any excess off you can see a little bit comes off and then you literally just start in the center of your face and bring it in and buff it and I'll show you half and half you can bring it around the eyes it's very safe it's got no preservatives it can't grow bacteria in it so you don't have to worry at all about any of those kind of issues because it's 100% mineral, it actually, you know, it doesn't even really have a use by date. 
and it's got really good coverage and it's very, very lightweight. So that's the side I've done and that's the side I've not done. So I'm not sure how good the lighting is in here. Faith and I thought that we had the lighting down pat. <laughs> yes, I'm good. <laughs> we spent a bit of time. Um, and then literally you just bring it all the way around. I've got quite a bit of pigmentation down this side. It covers it up really nicely and it's really easy. And when you're in a hurry, it's also fabulous because it, um, it just, you know, it's so quick. Always bring it across the ears as well. And you can put it, put it on your mouth. It's great, as I said, around the eyes because it acts as a primer. So if you're wearing um, eyeshadow, it gives your eyeshadow, sorry, I've got a bit of hair there, gives your eyeshadow something to grip as well and helps your eyeshadow last longer. So that's basically my foundation done. And you can see I've got really good coverage. It's... Um, it's very lightweight, so it doesn't actually look like I'm wearing a heap of foundation either. So that's the um, that's the first step. So normally if I was not going out, I would probably just wear this and then I'll pop on the rest of my makeup. But what I'm going to do is I'll show you um, how to combine both foundations so you get the dewy look. Um, so this is it. This is the liquid, and I'll show you what this looks like as well. I'll put it on a little bit on the back of my hand. So that's that's what it looks like. You really honestly do not use a lot. And I'm using the same brush. And all I'm going to do is just bring it across in those areas that I feel like I might need a bit of extra coverage. So the thing about mineral, mineral uh, foundations is always wear a sheer layer first and then give you give yourself a bit of a hard look, bit of critical look and decide if you need it anywhere, anywhere, anymore. Um, just, just one little note on our liquid foundation. This actually um, did get the Prevention Magazine 2022 Best Foundation of the Year Award. So we're very proud of that. We're a very small brand. So it's it was really exciting because, you know, we're up against, you know, NARS and all those big ones. So, you know, we're going, oh, you know, the little guy does sometimes come first. So always bring it right up under the eyes as well because um, you might find that you don't need concealer if you've got good coverage with your foundation. So see I'm using, and because I'm using the same brush, I'm not wasting any product. And um, just a, a little note on a brush, um, you can use fingers for a liquid foundation. You can obviously a powder foundation. You can't use your fingers. That would be very, very messy. But a liquid foundation, you can use fingers, or you could potentially use a sponge. Personally, I'm not a fan of sponges because I think they're really bad for the environment because you end up having to throw them away. And also, again, they absorb a lot of that product, and you end up just wasting um, product that you shouldn't have to waste. Um, but if you use a brush, you buy a good quality brush, you look after it, um, you know, wa wash it once a week. And I personally find it quite satisfying washing my brushes. It's like you see the, all the makeup come out of them and you think, oh, I've actually achieved something today, which is always a good thing. Um, and it will last you a long time. So an investment in a good quality brush is quite worthwhile. So now you can see that I've got that glow across my cheeks, which when I had the, um, just the powder foundation wasn't as kind of, I don't know what the word is, intense isn't the right word, but it, you just couldn't see it as much. So I'm pretty happy with my coverage. I wouldn't wear any more makeup than that. I think um, it's really important, particularly as older women, that we look like ourselves. And we need to be proud of what we look like. We've got you know, we've got our signs of our a life well lived. And I think wearing just the right amount of makeup gives you gives you that um, gives you that like look. So what I would do now is use a setting spray to set my base. So this is our setting spray. This is a dual product. So you can use it as a setting spray. It's a fabulous setting spray. It's it doesn't have alcohol in it, which you find that a lot of setting sprays have got in them, which for older skin is quite drying. 
So obviously alcohol dries things out. So immediately you put it on your face, it's going to make your skin feel um, more dry. Ours is a glycerin base, which gives, it still sets the makeup, but it doesn't have that same drying effect. It also contains rose and neroli and aloe vera and um, hydrating ingredients, which give you, again, we're all about putting back the hydration in your skin. So I, I just would do a couple of sprays of this. And, you know, you have to do the wave because that's what they all do on, on the makeup videos. <laughs> do the wave, let it dry. Just give it a minute or two to let it dry. And um, people are very, and I have to admit, I was too very sceptical of setting sprays, but they actually are amazing. I don't know if any of you have ever used them, but they really, really work. Um, but, and also they're also, you know, what we've done with ours is um, we've tried to make it a spritzing spray as well. So for example, if you're traveling, you can use it on a plane to uh, put hydration back into your skin. If you have like, like me, like I seem to have at the moment, have lots of hot moments, it's really good for helping calm the skin down and reduce any redness that you might have if you're getting sweaty or, you know, that kind of thing. So that, that's now. I can feel that. It feels really nice. It feels moist. I've got good coverage and I think I've got a nice glow. So the next step, um, if you're depending on what what you, you know, what your makeup requirements are, there's a few things that we always recommend it, you would do as a as an older woman, what you wear. We always recommend doing your eyebrows because eyebrows, defined eyebrows are, you know, define the face and create shape of the face. We always recommend a blush because when you've taken all the color out of your face by wearing a foundation, your face becomes quite one dimensional. So you need to put color back in. So wearing a blush will do that. So if you you know can't be bothered doing any eye makeup or whatever it is, always wear a blush. And then a lip because, again, you've taken all that color out and you want to give your face color back. So a nice... Um, if, whether it's an, a fairly nude lip or whether it's a bright lip, it really lifts, um, really lifts your face. So I'm going to start with my brows. How are we going for time? Am I talking too much? Um, so brows. This is a product that we have. It's called a brow butter. And we've got one shade. So it, it works on everybody. And it's a castor oil base and castor oil is supposedly good for helping hair growth. So that's why we made it a castor oil base. Plus it's also um, hydrating and easy to use, which is what we all want. So we recommend a brush like this. See how it's got a really tight angle. It's very precise and you can use this brush for eyeshadow and things as well. Um, and it's also got a spoolie end. So you can use it to brush up your brows. So I'm just going to pick up a little bit of the product. Um, I'm going to have to do it in the mirror on my Zoom. So I apologize for any weird faces I'm going to pull. What you need to do is look for the beginning of your brow, which should be in line with the corner of your nose and the edge of your brow, which needs to be in line with the corner of your eye. You don't want to bring your brow too far down because that kind of pulls your face down and we are wanting a lifting effect. So you want to stop it literally at the corner of your eye because you also don't want to stop it too soon and your eyebrows too short because it it doesn't kind of give your face balance and when you apply the brow butter you do it in little tiny hair like strokes and just fill in if you if you're lucky enough to have brows which not all of us do you're literally just going to fill in those gaps if you don't have brows you're going to use the um the brow butter to draw little mini hairs that are going to then look like your real brows and brush it up in between because then that will apply the product onto the skin which makes this makes the product last longer this product is actually um, waterproof as well so if you do get caught in the rain you don't have to worry about your brows ending up halfway down your face which is never the most attractive look and given the amount of, of rain we've had in Sydney lately could happen to any of us at any time so we're just going to draw them in and do really nice feathery strokes if and even if you actually have your brows tattooed which a lot of women do you can still use a product like this to create the look of the of the hair 
So I'm just going to bring it down to about there. Um, you can see, I'll just give you a demonstration. If I brought it down too far, you can see how this brow doesn't, it really does bring the look of my eye down. Whereas this one, because it's in line with the corner of my eye, it actually just gives that kind of lifting effect of my on my face. So this is like my bad side. Don't do this. And this is the good side. And um, I don't I don't like my brows too dark, but because this product is mineral, you can layer it up and you can actually, if you've got, you know, dark hair, dark skin, you can use it to get, um, get a much darker brow. So that's the brows. The next, um, the next thing I'm going to do is I will do my, my blusher because I just want to show you how important it is when you've got no other makeup on to have a really nice um, blush. So we recommend, and this is really um, a really big thing for older women, always use a cream blush. Powder blushes are fabulous when you're younger, but when you're older, you want a product that is going to move with your skin and a powder sitting on top of your skin is not going to move. It's just going to sit on top. And I mean, we all, I mean, I certainly remember my grandmother who um, she used to wear a, a powder blush and you would see it and it would sit in the hair. You know, we've all got hair on our faces um, and you just see it sitting there and it doesn't move with your skin, whereas a cream blush will move with, um, with the texture that we all have in our faces. The other thing with a, um, a cream blush is it, it is hydrating. So it gives that dewy look that we that we that we all want that is that kind of, and I hate to say it youthful, that's not the word that I want, but it's that um it's that look that gives you a lift, which is what you know what we're looking for from makeup to have a nice lift. Um, okay, so this is the cream blush. This is the shade that I'm using. And I'm going to use a brush, but you can, that's the other great thing about cream brushes is you can just use your fingers and just do a tapping motion. But I'm going to use a brush because I just want to show you exactly where to apply it. Um, a good blush brush, which is always very hard to say, is an angled one. So see how that's got an angle? It's, they're, they're tight bristles. They're nowhere near as tight as, for example, this brush, but they're quite tight so that will pick up um, quite a lot of product and with the application when we were young we were taught to smile and put the blush here which is pretty much in the center of your cheeks the apples of your cheeks but our cheeks have now moved downwards so we want to lift our faces up and therefore we want to place the blush in a higher position than we would have in the past so what um, I recommend is find the high point of your cheekbone which is basically here. And then instead of, you know, we used to kind of go, especially in the 80s, like it was such a thing, you know, you do this big line up here and we'd go, oh, that that looks great. But really, I don't know about that in hindsight. But we want the, we want the high point of your cheekbone and you just want to grab the blush and bring it up to your hairline. So that gives the impression of a lift to the face. I'll just show you because you should be able to see it on both sides. The good thing about a cream blush too is you can layer it up. So if you want extra color, you just you let it soak in for a minute or two and then you put the next layer on. So you can see with the blush on that side that it immediately has projected my cheekbone forward and it makes gives my face the dimension that it lacks on this side with my bad eyebrow. And it's really as simple as that. So you find the high point of your cheekbone. And with a, with a cream blush, a good way to apply is by the tapping, which is why it also works well with um, a finger because you can just tap it in. And now that I've got that, you can immediately see I kind of look like I've come to life a bit. I've got some colour. I've got some dimension. And if you're worried and you think, oh, it doesn't look right, just grab your brush that you've already used for your foundation and fix up anything that you think 
doesn't work. So it's that's why it's really handy using a foundation brush because you can do the same thing if you feel like you mess up your eyeshadow or uh, your concealer. You just can blend it away with your foundation brush because there's always a bit of product still in there from when you put it on earlier. So that's the that's the blush, and like I look immediately look like I've come back to life. Um, the other trick too, which is a quite a nice one, if you're not wearing eyeshadow, a little um, thing to do is just put a little bit of blush under the brows and that kind of balances the face and brings it all together and it just gives you a little bit of colour. So if you're, you know, you're not, um, not keen on wearing eyeshadow for whatever reason, um, that's just a nice little, nice little trick to do. Um, the next step, which I'm going to do is bronzer. So this is our bronzer. Again, it's the same thing. You know, it's very optional. If you don't want to wear a bronzer, don't wear a bronzer. But I just want to show you kind of what a bronzer does because there's a lot of talk about contouring and, you know, changing the face using different bits and pieces. Our bronzer is very neutral. But what you basically what the purpose of a bronzer is is to create, create warmth and dimension. So if you're going to use a bronzer, you would do it under where you've just put your blusher. And what it does, it creates a bit of a shadow under there. And you can see how it makes my cheekbones projected forward because it's now put that area into shadow. So it projects my cheekbone forward and it's sort of narrowed my face a little bit on that side. And you can do the same thing on your jawline if you're worried about, you know, jowls which is a terrible word, I will say. Um, it kind of puts them into shadow. It's also nice to use a little bit up here, particularly if you're worried, like you've got a receding hairline. Um, you can put that area in shadow. And, um, you know, it's just not as obvious if your hairline's a little bit further back than it used to be. So I'm just going to even it up on that side. And there, so my cheekbones are now projected forward and I've got that warmth and dimension. You can use a brush as well. So again, just use the same kind of brush that you use for your blusher. Obviously, you don't use the same brush <laughs> because you'll still have blush on this brush, but this kind of brush is, is the kind of one that you're looking for. And as well, you know, if you've got a nice bronzer, you can also use it as an eyeshadow. So um, it's great, like we really believe as a brand to have products that are multi-purpose so if you can use the same product for several different things you're going to save money and you're actually going to use your makeup so because there's nothing worse than buying a whole bunch of things and then you actually don't use any of them so um then i'm just going to quickly because i know faith is such an eyeshadow lady i want to just quickly um talk about eyes and eyeshadow and one of the biggest things that older women have problems with is hooding so this is where the skin underneath comes down and so a lot of women won't wear eyeshadow they won't wear mascara because the transfer you get from mascara up here and also the fact that if you've got quite bad hooding then you can't see whatever eyeshadow you're putting on anyway so you feel like you're just wasting your time so just a couple of quick little tips with that one tip, which is, um, where have I put it? Oh. I carefully put my things somewhere where I would find them and now I've got like the brain where I don't know where I put it. Oh, here we go. It was hiding. Okay. One little tip, which is great for um, hooding is wearing a white eyeliner. So if you have a, um, make, always make sure your eyeliners are really soft. So you want to test them, make sure that they, you know, grow really easily onto your hand before you put them on your eyes because the minute you start fiddling around with that really thin skin, which is often quite crepey, um, if you've got a product that's not going to go on, you're gonna, you can actually damage that skin. So you don't want to do that. So a great little tip is putting a bit of white eyeliner just on the waterline of your eye. And that gives your eyes, you can see it opens your eyes up which is what you want when you've got the hooding coming down here. And it also um, makes the whites of your eyes more obvious. So 
your eye, people are looking at your eyes. They're not noticing what's going on up here. Um, the other thing to, to remember with hooding is to do really intricate eye shadows that you see is probably you're just going to waste your time. Just wear something that looks nice, that makes you feel happy. And if it's a shimmer, do it like there's a lot of stuff. Don't Older women shouldn't wear shimmery eyeshadows. Bollocks to that, I say. Wear whatever you want. Um, I think a bit of shimmer is fabulous. Like it can just like increase your mood, make you feel great. If you're going out at night and you've got a bit of a shimmery eye, I just think, oh, good on you. You look amazing. It's like red lipstick, you know. It's one of those things that if you love it, just do it. So what we recommend for ladies with quite bad hooding is to stick to neutral shades um so for example we have we've got two we've got a set some cream eyeshadows and we've also which are great for very crepey um eyes because again it's that they move with the skin um and we also have a palette which is just these shades so we've got a nice shimmery champagne a nice neutral taupe a white which is great for um opening the eyes up then we've got a beautiful copper which, which looks great on everybody and it's got that lovely um, shimmer to it as well a matte brown and a pink and they're all just very flattering colors that anyone can wear um, and you can mix them up and have a bit of fun because I genuinely believe that eyeshadow is where you can have the most fun with your makeup you can you know whatever you want to do you can do it if you don't want to do it just wear something nice and neutral so what I will do is I'm just going to show you our two of our very neutral colors in our cream. So the first one I'm going to show you is top. So you can see this color, it's very neutral. It works on all um, skin tones. The thing that a lot of older women have, sorry, what's the time? 1042, um, is color discoloration around the eye. So you get blueness and redness. So that's why I said before about putting. Um, a primer so you can either use your powder foundation if you're using that if you're not using powder foundation use an eye primer so something like this product and that um that will give the makeup something to grab as well as taking out the discoloration because the problem with the discoloration is obviously that the eyeshadows aren't going to be true to color so i've already got the um whatever it's called foundation mental blank on my eyes so I'm not going to worry about putting more on and all I'm going to do is get a nice thick fluffy eyeshadow brush I'm going to grab the top and just literally windscreen washer it across my eyes and you can do this with any shade so if you want to wear blue you want to wear purple you want to wear pink whatever it is I'm just picking a nice neutral shade because remember also I've put the blusher up here and it just um nicely sits on the eye and becomes part of the eyelid the tip with eyeshadow is if you are wearing eyeshadow again it's that thing don't bring it too far down always stop it and if you're wearing an eyeliner for example on the top or a a um a different color along this uh, uh what do you call it eye line then flick it up um, because then you'll get that lifting impression. So I'm just going to do a little bit of that. And you can see it's, it's just taken out that colour. It's given me a nice neutral eye. And then I'm going to get in with my champagne, which is this lovely shimmery one, which also acts as a highlighter, I'll say, as well. And I'm just going to use my finger and just pop a little bit of that on my eyelid. And you can bring it into this corner as well. So if you get very dark in there, it will lighten that area up. And again, it takes away people noticing the hooding and it will draw their attention into the actual, into actually your eyes rather than your eyelids or your brow. Sorry, I always make funny faces when I do this. Another really good, so there you go, that's probably all I would do. And another really good little trick as well is if you're feeling quite adventurous, I really like to what is called tight line. And that's where you get a pencil um, and you, not that one, 
where's my pencil? Oh, here we go. Uh, you lift your eye. You would do this obviously before you've put your eyeshadow on. Lift your eye and then you line under here. Um, it's a really, especially if you're going out at night, it looks really effective. And then you can just bring your, um, because you've lined under the eye, uh, under where the eyelashes are, you can just bring a nice gentle line that you can blend across the top. So it gives you a really um, easy and quick kind of smoky eye. And it works well if you're going out at night. I'm not going to do it now because we're about to, we've only got five minutes. So the last thing um, I'm going to talk about, then I would set my makeup again. So just to, especially in summer, you might not need to do it twice in winter, but definitely do it in summer. The last thing, um, last thing I will always recommend doing is always put your mascara on last. So do everything, including your lips, and then do your mascara last. And always keep this handy because if you're going to mess anything up and it's going to go anywhere, it will be your mascara. It could end up here. It can end up here. Doesn't matter what mascara you use, it's all they always end up doing it. So I'm just going to quickly talk about lips. So as I said, a lip is really great for an older woman because it it gives you color, it gives you, and it's oh, it's a bit of fun, you know. Um, we definitely recommend lip liners because often we have lines around our lips and the lipstick can bleed into those lines, and it's not always um, a look that we want. So always use again a very waxy lip liner. I'm going to use one. This is called Pink and Plum. And colour in your whole lip. I've got very thin lips, unfortunately. It's one of those things as older women too, you, that's one of the first things that's, that goes. You tend to lose volume in your lips, unfortunately. And don't overline your lips too much because um, it can look a bit, doesn't always look great. You know, you can look a bit like you've got clown lips. And the other trick is not to bring your lip liner right into the corner. So just stop it a couple of millimetres before. Colour in your lips. And, oh, I just broke it. That acts as a, um, that basically acts as a lipstick almost, and it gives your lipstick something to hold on to. And then, you know, whatever colour you want to pick is whatever your personal choice is, pink, red, browns. Try to avoid too many really rusty colours because often they don't suit older complexions. But all I'm going to do is pop on a lip gloss. Which has got a bit of a sparkle. And that's all I'm going to do with my lips. It's a nice everyday lip. And last of all, uh, the only thing I'm going to quickly talk about, because I know I've only got two minutes, is mascara. So mascara, we recommend only putting on your upper lashes because you want to, again, it's that whole lifting thing. If you've got only mascara on your upper lashes, it makes your eyes look more open. And the other thing we don't recommend is a waterproof mascara. Try and avoid them because they're often really hard to get off and you're going to take your lashes with them. And obviously, as we get older... That's what happens. You lose your eyelashes and they don't grow back at the same rate that they do when you're younger. But um, mascara is, I love it. It's my, probably my favourite product out of anything because immediately you put mascara on, it looks like you're, you're dressed. And always, you know, if you've got time, do a couple of layers. And if you've got hooding, try and concentrate on these outside lashes rather than doing too much on the inside because the outside lashes are the ones that you're going to see and they'll also open your eyes up. So I'm just going to, my mum always used to put mascara on with her mouth open and I feel like it's something I've inherited. Oh, my gosh. So there we go. So what's that? 10.49, I think I've done well. I could have kept going, but I'm going to stop there. Amazing, so, Catherine. You there look we go. Amazing. Sorry, I feel like I've done so much talking. No. You look absolutely beautiful and thank you. I got some, I've taken lots of notes myself personally as well. And right. I'm just going to go into the chat. There's a couple of questions in the chat then I'll just open the floor up if we've got time. Yep. So um, Deborah asks, what do you wash your makeup brushes with? Because I think that's a really, really good question. Yeah, so you know what? I just wash it with either baby shampoo or the kitchen. Um, as long as it's a nice, pure product, like a soap, 
you don't have to go and buy a special makeup um, makeup washer thing. I do quite like, you can get those pads, which you get at, like they're rubber and you, they stick to your sink and you can wash your brush on top of those. They're actually quite a useful um, investment. They're only about $15 and they do make it easier and quicker to do it. So I would recommend one of those, but don't buy any special soaps or anything like that. You're just, it's a waste of money. Beautiful. I use um, just washing up liquid on for my hand and that exactly. works really well. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I loved what you said about the primer. I've never used primer. I've always, I've been looking at that for years and I really love what you said about it. It's giving the foundation something to sit on. It makes so much sense. Yeah. And also the setting lotion. Those are the two things I'm going to take away from today and I'm going to definitely invest in them. Yeah. Oh, great. Yeah. No, they really, the primer particularly, because we're, our skin is so much more textured as we get older, that's the primer really helps with um, stopping the caking and the sitting in the lines. So it does create a much smoother surface for the foundation to stick on. So it's really worthwhile. And the setting spray, like, you know, they, they are actually really good. And particularly in the summer, because you do find, you know, your makeup doesn't stay on as long. Um, you know, you're getting in and out of cars and going in air conditioning and out of air conditioning and all those sorts of things. So really useful investment. Great. And Kirsty had, um, do you wear, what? I don't know if it means, what do you wear as a daily hair oil or do you wear daily hair oils? Kirsty, do you want to just clarify that question? So you're on, you're on mute. <laughs> <laughs> can, you, can you hear me? Yeah. Yep. Great. Okay. Uh, I think, uh, unless I misheard, I think you said the oil you put on your face, you can also use in your hair. Oh, yeah, you can use it. ask how you do that. Well, all you do is just grab a little bit, rub it in your hands, and then you can use it on your hair, and it helps. It's a bit like Moroccan oil. You know what Moroccan oil does? It sort of stops the flyaways. It does the same sort of thing. Like, you know, don't use too much because your hair will look greasy. But if you just have a very small amount and do, my hair tends to stick out a lot. So I always put a little bit before I, after I blow dry my hair and um, which I haven't done today, as you can tell. Um, gosh, it's sticking up everywhere. Um, and it really does work. It's also great for cuticles. Um, it works um, for your cuticles and it's really good for dry patches like elbows and knees and things like that. So it's quite a, you know, multi-purpose yeah, product. Great, thanks. Okay, that's great. So do we have any other questions? Anyone? Cleo, are you in a position to ask a question? <laughs> she's hiding. No, oh, she's hiding. What about you, Deborah? I don't really have a question either. I was just um, interested in the routine and the primer and... Um, intrigued to try a powder foundation now because I've never been oh and one thing I did sorry I did forget to talk about was concealer mm. so just quickly concealer um we all, always get asked do you do your concealer before or after your foundation always do it after because you might find that you don't need concealer so, um, you know, just check what whether you need it or not and then go with it um, if you do. So, and also when you put it on, oh, sorry, I know we've only got a few minutes, but I just want to show you quickly how to actually put it on because I did forget. Always put a little bit in the corner like that where you get that real darkness and then bring it up. That lifting effect that I kept talking about before, you can do the same thing with your concealer. And it's, it's usually a shade or two lighter than your foundation. And then you get that lightness, you can see there, where it's lifting, lifting my eye area. And don't wipe it or swipe it, always tap it. And I think you're supposed to actually use your fourth finger, but I'm a, I, I prefer to use my third. I don't know why. But um, that is how you apply it so that's one eye with it and that's without it and you can see it does make a big difference if you've got lots of dark circles and then if you mess it up go with your foundation brush and fix it up <laughs> my favorite trick <laughs> wonderful okay so we've got time for just one more question anyone else want to ask a question Beautiful. That was really, really informative. Thank you so much. I mean, I've been wearing makeup forever and there was still so much that I learned from that. So 
I really appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, now, can I just mention that we do, if you come to our website, um, ragesandbeauty.com.au, we've got a special um, offer for anyone who's attended today. So it's the there's 25% off all our kits and sets. Um, so if you just pop, pop in the code SIRENS25, all one word, you'll get 25 off at checkout. So I've put that information in the chat, ladies. So have a look in the chat for that. And I have to say, I've already made my purchase as we were thinking it. So I've got my 25% <laughs> off. Super excited about that. Fantastic. Thank you. I'm just going to stop the recording.